السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وعليكم السلام أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا حبيب قلوبنا وحبيب نفوسنا وشفيع قلوبنا وقاسم الصفا والحمد السلام عليكم يا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي تمت بثنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما نهيت وبقي الليل والنهار فلا جعله الله آخر الأهد مني بزيارتكم وتجاب إن شاء الله السلام على through this night and this month inshallah and that is the moment that again we have to ask ourselves if we are getting closer to achieve those goals inshallah let me tell you something interesting we think we have a lot of concerns in our lives a lot of difficulties a lot of anxieties a lot of phobias a lot of fears a lot of stressors in life every day Many of them are because of our decisions. Many of them because of our lifestyle that we decided for ourselves. And we should go towards the way that we would have less concern in life about our physical life and move towards more of the concerns that Ahlul Bayt had. What do you mean, Sayyid? You mean Ahlul Bayt had some concerns in life? Yes. Ahlul Bayt actually they had huge concern in their life that <coughs> occupied their mind every day and every second of their life. If we see that Imam Ali is crying in Dua Al and if we see that he made that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to that level, if we see Imam Sajjad Ali is crying he became Zain al Abidin. It's over one main concern that they had in their lives. That that concern occupied their mind and didn't let any other concerns to be in their mind to that level. And that was the only concern, their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What they can do to build a better relationship. They didn't want to stop and be stable in one level or one grade. Always trying to move higher and higher and higher. We have proof for that. Some amazing proofs. 
Amir al-Mu'mineen is sitting in the Qutbah Sha'baniyyah by Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah is talking about Ramadan and the whole situation. And Amir al-Mu'mineen asks a question. He says, what is the best amal and action in Ramadan? And Rasulullah says, al-waraw al maharim Allah, to keep yourself away from haram. When Rasulullah said this, he started crying. What happened? I'm adding to this. Did I ask anything? What happened? Any question? <laughs> Rasulullah says, Ya Ali, in a month like this, Ramadan, the worst of all people, Ashqal Ashqiya, would dye your beard with the blood of your head while you're praying in Masjid. So literally, Rasulullah is telling Amir al-Mu'mineen about the Shahada, the way of Shahada. So if someone comes to tell me about the way that I will die in this world, what will be my first question? What will be my main concern in life? I probably would ask, you know, how are my children? What will be the status of my family? Is there anyone to take care of them? Some other people might ask, how about my business? How about this person or that person? Everything and anything around my daily life. And Amir al-Mu'mineen, he already knows he's the most important person after Rasulullah in the whole world. He's asking one question from Rasulullah. He says, وَذَلِكَ فِي سَلَامَةٍ مِنْ دِينِ When they kill me, how is the status of my deen, religion? Ya Ali, Rasulullah just told you that while you are, this fix the words is not good, it's whistling. Rasulullah, he just told you while you are praying, he just told you that, you know, while you're praying in masjid, the best of all, you know, shahada that you can imagine, and you know yourself, you have many examples that you know yourself, you are the best of all. But when there is a concern, when the concern is the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you ask. When there is a concern, the concern will occupy your mind and you ask question based on what? The concern. And Rasulullah says, Yes, the best of all you know, levels of deen, yes, belongs to me, Ya Allah. Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wa salam, Pay attention to this. Imam Hussein alayhi salatu was salam, in the last moment of his life, look at this. What does he say? We all know. Bilahi ridwan, Ya Allah, because you wanted, I want this as well. This is the only concern that Hussein has. Another example. The reason I'm, I'm saying this concerns in our lives is over one thing. That our daily life, what kind of concern we have in our daily life? What kind of concern I have for my children when I'm training them, when I'm... What is the concern of them? What major they want to choose? What kind of life the they're going to have? Or even the Iman as well? It's the noon of Ashur. Look at this, it's very important. The noon of Ashur. It's already Azan. This is one of the codes of Ashura, by the way. Remember I said there are many codes that we have to decode them. There are many concerns, there are many secrets that we have to figure out what kind of secrets they are. It's the Dohra of Ashura, Imam Hussain, he ordered it. It's the time of Azan, we have to have the Salat Jama'ah. They put few of the soldiers in front of the army of Yazid, my own, but what? Because they are not going to let them even pray. If we see any, any Christian, Jews, I don't know, atheists, they want to somehow pray, we respect them, right? We respect them, this is stuff. But they see that they are going to pray, of course we shouldn't let them pray, because if they pray and our army see that they are praying, this is who we are fighting with. Anyhow, one of the guys standing in front of the, you know, the Jama'ah, so would be taking the arrows coming towards him, not to go towards the mom and his companion, at the end of the Salat, they said his body was full of arrows. He couldn't stand anymore. As soon as the Imam Hussain said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, he fell down and the Imam came and he held his hand. What should he say to the Imam in the last moment? He probably said, he probably should say, you know, Imam Hussain, did you see, alhamdulillah, I told you I'm gonna, you know, be loyal to you, something like that, right? See Imam Hussain, look at my body, I'm becoming shaheed. He said, what do you think? He 
ministry of the the ministry of I was fighting to your house Was I loyal to you? Did I, did I do whatever I was supposed to do? I, I don't understand this. I mean, you're dying here. Your body is full of arrows. And your head is on the fire for us. And you're dying for the sake of Allah and Imam Hussein. And you're still asking, did I do what I was supposed to do? that brothers when he comes to masjid and he pray Jumaah on one day God forbid me if in one night he wakes up and says Salat al the next day that he's going to go out it looks like he's saying different things you know it's like Allah owes him something because he says Salat al last time so if I do I see any angels around yeah I said that's Salat al the way that he talks to people is different it's like Concern. I will fight to Ibn Rasulullah. Did I do what I was supposed to do? My mom says, Yes, you did. You will be in front of me in Jannah. You will be in front of me in Jannah. Because of your concern. And now, let's come to our time. We're going to the time of the, you know, the society of Muhammad Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam, and we're coming back to analyze our own society. And now our fathers, our mothers, our fathers are going to give some advices to their children. What kind of advices would you A mu'min father, the main advice that he will give, the main concern of him is the iman of his children. He's not always telling him, you know what, son, if you do this, this business, and this better than that business, you can make money here and there, be careful with this. When she's going to get married, the advices that mothers would give her, what kind of advices is that? The advices that would train them, help them understand and realize their responsibilities as wives, as husband. On the other side, the concern is just dunya, for the sake of dunya. Whatever we can, however we can to achieve more of this dunya. You know what? Some people, if they have nothing else to do, I'm talking about during the whole year, if there is nothing else to do, if there is no party, there's no ceremony, if there is no movie, if there's no soccer play, if anything, there's nothing else, there's no movie as well, they ask each other, where to go? Okay, let's go to Masjid, there's nothing else to do. <laughs> let's go to Masjid, this is Thursday night. You know what, my son has tests tomorrow, my son has a school tomorrow, so between the school and Masjid, between the school and so let's forget about masjid, let's forget about not going to masjid because the school is more important. And he's being raised, this child, by knowing that my school is more important than what? Masjid and salat. And khutbah and everything else. My school and his business is not as is more important than masjid. If we have any party, any gathering in our families, that's more important than our masjid. If there is nothing else to do, then we go to masjid. And when he becomes teenagers, they bring him to me and they say, please help because he's not praying. He's not coming to masjid. What are you looking for? Why he's not coming to masjid? Because you trained this. Because when you were talking to your friends, when you had a party, and that was the azan time, you were so chatting nicely, and he was hearing the sort of azan, and he was saying, mom is still sitting there and talking about it, whether they're enjoying or watching TV or something. So it's like, okay, Salat is important probably because Sayyid Hadi is saying it, but not that important because my father is not paying that much attention to Salat. Hijab is important, but my mom sometimes, he doesn't have the job comes out. So, you know, Islam is something, it's good to have it sometimes when you like it. If you feel to be religious, then you should be religious. If you don't feel it, so, you know, it's optional. I'm not talking about Salat necessarily. I'm not talking about the message. I'm talking about when they come and do not respect their parents, if you are following the rules where it's coming from, maybe it's coming from this. But remember we said Islam is not just Salat and fasting, and it's not about just coming to Masjid. Islam is what is the whole puzzle. That one part of it is this ibadah and rituals we have. The major part is about learning the rituals, learning the ethics, learning the respect, having the hustahul and 
So let me ask this question. I want to ask myself, you ask yourself, what is the major concern that I have in my life? Right now, let's answer. Let's find our answers. Your major concern is something that occupies your mind every day. Your major concern is something that you're dealing with this every day. But say it, you know, I have bills to pay, I have a lot of concern, I have, I understand that we have all we have this. But what is the priority in life? What is the major things, major concern that we're supposed to have in our life? What is that? Don't you think the Ashab of Mom are saying they had life, they had bills to pay somehow? They have something to do in their life. They had. That's why their enemies were saying, you know, because many of people who they left the mountain said because of these things, because of their. So what is my major concern? Let me tell this again. I can come and sit down here and says, brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, we're among the followers of Muhammad Hussein, and everything is good, mashaAllah. Let's pray a little bit better. Do not lie and don't do ghaiba, inshallah. Let's go. It's like in this, uh, I said that before another night. It's like in the fourth grade or second grade, keep repeating two times two, four. two times two, four. And we are alhamdulillah, we know the answer. See? We can answer. Never think that one day you have to learn how to solve an equation. You have to see that you don't know many things, so you know you have to learn something extra. How long, alhamdulillah, you have to refuse to be among the followers of Muhammad? based on the ages that we're sitting here. How many matches of Imam Hussain I attended so far? How many shahadat have Imam Hussain I witnessed in the majalis that we have? How much I am improved because of attending the majalis of Imam The first night I asked the question, says, if you check yourself, what did you learn from last night? Any promise, any decision, anything you decided to achieve, to have. And today you can check this, Alhamdulillah, because of the blessings of last Muharram and the majority of Muhammad Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam, I am a better person, I have more sab and more patience, I'm better with my family, my salat is different, anyhow, anything. If there's nothing that I'm achieving, then I have to ask. In parentheses, again, Sitting in the majlis of Imam Hussein, that's amazing. If you don't have anything else to achieve, let me contradict myself. <laughs> let me contradict myself. If you don't achieve anything from this majlis, just be sitting in the majlis of Imam Hussein is everything. Just breathing in the majlis of Imam Hussein yourself and your children, that's enough. I'm contradicting myself. I hope you can get it, my phone, right? Just being here and sitting in the majlis of Imam Hussein. Forget about if you have a tear comes for the sake of Imam Hussain Oh my God. Hadith. One single tear for Imam Hussain comes down. Has the capacity to remove all your sins. Alhamdulillah. Tawfiq to come here. Very good. There's no doubt that inshallah we had the permission that we're here sitting here tonight in the Vice of Imam Hussain. But my question is something else. I am here today, I want to have the maximum benefit of Majlis of Imam Hussain. I want to get the most. I don't want when Imam Mahdi alayhi salatu was salam. I don't want to be a simple Shia and follower somewhere living in the world. No, I want to be close. I said that, you know. 80, 85 percent of people in the world that don't have a goal in their lives. If I ask many of you guys, do you have any goal in your life? You don't. We're doing something, we're working somewhere, but it's not a goal. Even in our physical life, I'm dealing with clients every day. Goal, something clear, crystal clear that I know what I'm going to do. Many of us, we're working in a job that we don't like. We just have to because we have to pay this, right? It's not a goal. The same in our spiritual world as well. If you ask someone in your Iman, in your spirituality, what is the goal? Where do you want to achieve? Where do you want to go? What do you mean, say a goal? Yeah. Do you want to be a simple resident of Medina, Mecca, or Kufa? Give an example. 
or you want to be somewhere like Salman and Abba Bar al Sky is the limit. Higher than that is the limit in the path of Islam and Islam. What is my goal? My goal that inshallah when I pray, I will be away from all these distractions and ties in this dunya. Only focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My goal is one of the ulama, he asked his son, he says, who do you want to become when you grow up? And he says, you know, father, because you're a marja, I want to become someone like you. The marja says, you're not going to be anyone. So why? Because I wanted to be one of the students of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam, I became like this. If you are having me as your role model, you're not going to get anywhere. Again, when we have everything, I think we've got my point in this night, rotating around confidence, self-esteem, rotating around being proud of being Muslim, being proud of being a follower of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam, when we have everything to be proud of. When we have everything to be proud of. Not that as soon as little things happen, we start, some people start, not here in Shabal, outside, start assimilating to the wrongdoing of the major culture by saying some people are doing something that are ignorant, and ignorant about our facts and our pages. The person went to a village and he saw everybody's, you know, they were scratching themselves. And he was not scratching He said, why you guys are scratching yourself? It says, why we are doing it or why you are not doing it? Something is wrong with you. <laughs> you have to scratch yourself as well. <laughs> so when you go some, maybe you have to see your values, not just to. So it leads this introduction to something I want to talk about tonight. And that's one of the factors that the Shia school of thought, the followers of Ahl al-Bayt, they got hurt over and over many times, is that they didn't have enough knowledge about the tricks of their enemies. At the time of Imam Hussein, in Damascus, in Sham, they knew a lot about Iman and Salat and praying and fasting and Jama'ah and Awal They knew about these things. One thing they didn't know are the tricks of Shaitan, the tricks of the enemies how the enemies would try to destroy them in this path. If you want to take a road trip, not only you have to know what kind of things you have to do in order to know the path, to know the, the roads that you have to take, I don't know, enough food, enough gas, whatever you need to have, you need to know about the threats in this path that you're taking. For example, the road might be icy, you need to have your chains, with yourself or car, you need to have this and that, but be careful with the weather. Many things you have to be on the other side. Not just what takes me over there. What would block my path? What are the hurdles in this path that would not let me get there as well? Usually people know a lot about these things. The path of Iman, the Salat and everything. They don't have enough knowledge about the enemies. As soon as we see that my friend, my, my son is friend with someone, I look at them, they look nice, alhamdulillah, yeah, we're not. Do you know what is behind that? Do you know the training behind it? Do you know the lifestyle that they might have? Say, is this your own analogy? Hadith in Rasul Qafi from Imam Sadi alayhi salatu wasalam. An amazing strategic hadith that we have here. It's saying that, this horrible generation that you can see they let people do I have your attention? Bani Umayya Abu Sufyan Ma'adiyah Yazid and all the way the worst in the past one they let people to learn about Iman. They let people be movement. Salat, pray. No one, Yazid himself is the leader. Let's go pray. Mu'avi is governor, you know what? Valid, he was drunk. And he said to the Salat, you know, fudge. Four rakah. <laughs> and no one said anything. He was drunk, he fell down. Salat? 
this strong guy would pray as well. The one who Mahat is said to be there. They let people learn about Iman but they did not let them learn about what? Of this place, transgressions. Why? Because if you learn about Kof, you realize that we're Kafir. You realize that Yazid is Kafir. You realize that Mahab is Kafir. You realize that Abu Sufyan, they've been forced to. It's amazing. When the Karawan of the Sarah, from the saints in our family, they entered Sham. You all heard about this. People of Sham were messages. They were celebrating. They were happy. They were clapping. They were saying, Alhamdulillah. But Allah took the revenge from you guys, Khariji. Khariji was what? Out of deen. You are not Muslim. You were praying. Jamaah. Fasting. But they don't know the tricks of Shaitan. They don't know how Shaitan would penetrate, how Shaitan would come to their life, and how Shaitan would destroy the life of people. This is what they don't know, and that's what that's how they even like it. Himself. He was trained by the tribe of his mother, who was Christian. Then he came. His teachers were what? Christian of Rome. His main advisor is what? Sarjun. Sarjun is a Christian. The same person that ordered him to have Ibn Ziyad become the governor of what? And he's trained <coughs> to what? Maybe not direct teaching of the someone else. Through few things. Through music, through poetry, probably dancing, drinking. Some people, when you talk about the facts, when you talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you talk about these facts, when you say we have to be careful, there are many things I can't even open up lately. So problem with speech, I cannot even open up to go into the details to tell you what is going on. I just think this way, then inshallah, you get it. For some people, when you tell them Allah says this is halal, this is haram, you gotta you know, be careful, you have to observe them. If they see there is a study comes out from somewhere, university they will believe it. Let me tell you a good example. Up until last, up until two weeks ago, the studies were saying that, secular studies, universities, they were saying that drinking one glass of wine is actually good for you every day. Two weeks ago, I think some of you guys saw it, two weeks ago, there was a study came out from Oxford University. It says, any level of alcohol is harmful for your body. Any level. Google it. CNN, BBC, all these things are important from us. Any level, small consumption of alcohol, this is bad. This is not good for your body. Sweetheart, Allah told you 1400 years ago, you didn't believe in it. And now because Oxford published and a study, now you believe in it. Yes, he's right. See? We told you 1400 years ago, Islam told you that's harmful, you should not use it. You didn't accept it. Now that you Google it, now, see? That's what it does. So that means you trust these people and universities more than a most part of the time. The same other things as well. When we talk about hijab, no, why? Why should we? He wants another study comes out and said hijab is good. Halal, I mean, halal, that some people are shy to say we're Muslim because of halal. UCLA, around six, seven years ago, published the study that halal meat has more, more nutritional facts than non halal meat. I know many people, non Muslim, they use halal meat just because of two things. They said it tastes better. I don't know the other one, it tastes better. This is, of course, this is studies I tell us. 
do I have to test Allah's order under my microscope and says, yes, Allah was right? danger of young adults between 12 to 35 are in the danger of hearing loss. That is one in five in the United States. They're having this issue, this, this threats of hearing loss. There's a what? What do you think is the reason? It's not my reason. There's a what? Music. All things that they are listening to. Young teenagers usually don't listen to music. They know what kind of music it is. Again, that's not, it's not from Islam, it's not from Quran, this is just WHO for research. Because they said, for example, 85 decibel are the sounds when it comes to you. For 8 hours, this dangerous. Or 100 decibel for 15 minutes would harm your hearing. Forget about the big concert that is happening that it says it's around 120 or 110 decibels that happens for hours and hours. I don't even go to the contents, to the lyrics, what's going on, no, just, just in general. Do we have to test Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over and over or we have to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or we have to believe when Imam Hussein says, come and help me. When Imam of Us says, come and help me, I have to believe in them and follow them. Imam Hussein at the night of Ashura, he took the worldly curtain and hijab away from his companion and he showed them their position in Jannah. When? When they decided to be with Imam Hussein alayhi Not before. Again, in Medina Yuhminuna bin Laqai. Medina Yuhminuna bin Laqai. So let me ask this question again. What is my major concern in life in this Muharram? If you ask many people, what do you want from Mom Hussein Ali Salah in this Muharram? Some people have their own haja, their own needs, their own requests, whatever they have. I know some people they have way higher requests from Allah and Mom Hussein. That's one thing. Help me to strengthen my Iman relationship with you. I have, it's not like, again, any hajj or any request, it's fine, there's nothing wrong. Right? Any, imagine if you have, you said you have 10 minutes appointment, you have half an hour appointment with a president. Go ask him whatever you want. And imagine if someone goes to the president and says, President, now that I have this opportunity, can you please give me a bicycle? Technically, you can ask him. But look who is there, what you can ask, how much you can pay, how generous that person might be. <laughs> Some people, they want to ask, almost want to have this night, they ask for something that is way higher than all those things. And they ask for Iman, they ask for this relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They ask for a better ibadah. They ask to understand the purpose of their life. The purpose of their ibadah, they ask this thing and this relationship. And it's up to us. It's up to us what we want to do. How we want to do this. That is why first night I said, let's set a goal for ourselves. Let's see what we want to do. Because you are in front of the maktab and the school of Alhamdulillah al -Bayt, in front of the door of Imam Hussein Remember that says the Ark of Imam Hussein Ali Salatu Salam Asra al Awsa. It's bigger and it's faster than anything else. It's amazing. Kulluhum sufar al Nijah. Ahl al Bayt. All of them. There are the Safina al Nijah. All of them. All of them. They can help us. They said themselves. 
but her veins are this bigger and faster. And now that they have to feel to be here sitting, it's the time to change, it's the time to use it for a purpose, to become a different person. That inshallah, when Imam of Aizmah Mahdi alayhi salatu salam, he looks at us, would be those who be the zina for us. He said themselves, Kumu zayna lana muratu wa mushayna. Be the zina. When we see that Shia says, Alhamdulillah, he's our father. She's our father. And it's not too important. So close to us. Between us and that level is one decision. It's one decision, like the same thing that for Ribni Yazid Riyahi he did. One decision. He decided to come from the side of Kuf to Iman. One decision. Look at the Mount Yusuf. Look at the Mount Yusuf. Look at the Mount Yusuf. Not in the right side. He made one decision. I can't, I can't do this. I have to be in the right side. And tonight, between us and that level is one decision. We still have time. The majority of moms is still, alhamdulillah, there any of the majority of moms. There's only one, one distance and that's it. That distance, you know what it is? My nafs and my ego. One of the Arafah, he was saying, you want to get close to Allah? Trample your nafs and your ego. Step on your ego and the next step is Allah. Another Arab says, no, 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 no. Once you step on your ego and your nafs, there is Allah. That's it. Once you can, you are so angry. Give the example over and over. Because your wife just told you something, you're so angry, so furious. And your whole nafs is telling you to answer her somehow that she knows how she, who she's dealing with. And she cannot answer and talk to you this way anymore. Quran comes and says, what? You have to control your anger. Once you put your foot on your mouth and control it, then you see Allah on the other side. When your husband told you something that you are so furious, you can somehow disrespect him. You have to make a balance, like them from brothers and sisters who have issue. When your husband says something you're so angry, that's the moment you have to control your anger. Inshallah, we'll talk more about this. One disrespect, one disrespect each other, one fall, one thing's here. will destroy the whole generation, destroy your children as well. That is nafs, that is controlling, that is what the people of the soldiers of Imam Hassan Ali Salaam, they could do. And that is what on the other side they could do. Alhamdulillah. Over and over, Ya Allah, we appreciate you for this tawfiq, for this opportunity that you gave us. That look at yourself and look at many other people in this world. That you have the tawfiq that you're sitting in front of the ma'al of Imam Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam, the traditions, ayat of Quran, the words from Ahlul Bayt, and you're learning about them. This is indeed to feel from the most part of the time. Ya Allah, do not take this favor away from us and our generation. Ya Allah, do not let anyone from our generation be against our debate. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, add into the muhabbat and the love of Hussein in our hearts every day. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa
که در سمستان عالمی الله He said, if Rasulullah ordered these people to be against us, to do things against us, they could not do anything worse than what they did to us, Ahlul Bayt. What else do you want to do to Hussein? You want to kill his six-month-old baby, you did. You wanted to kill his son Ali Akbar, you did. You wanted to kill his brother Abbal Fadlin Abbas, you did. You wanted to torture his sister Zainab, you did. What else is the one thing you left? You wanted to kill the son of Hassan Ibn Ali in front of him, you did. tonight tradition to mention the name of Hassan Ibn Al-Hazan this teenager of Imam Hassan he came in front of the tent of Hussain he's so worried Hassan Ibn Al-Hazan if I go inside would my uncle give me the permission that was a tradition they had to go and ask Imam to give them permission as soon as he went inside, the uncle of Hussein, do I have the permission to go to the battlefield of Hussein? Imam, look at Hussein. Hussein, you are my brother's son. Stay with me, don't go. They didn't give the permission. Some of the Maqatil, some of the traditions that Hussein came out. His mother was there, he was so sad. Oh, mother, Imam Hussein, my uncle didn't give me permission. <laughs> Some of the mother says, mother says, don't worry about this. I know a solution to it. What is it? She took a letter out from her father, Imam Hussein. Said, give this father this letter to your uncle and he would let you go. Hussain came inside the tent. Ya Hussain, uncle, I have something for you. What is it? A letter from my father, Imam Hussain. As soon as Imam Hussain saw the letter, he kissed it and he started crying. Imam said, Ya Hussain, I will not speak in Karbala, but my son, Hussain, let him go. Anyhow, he went into the battlefield. He killed many of this man all the way until the minute that he said, Ya Hussein, oh uncle, come and take care of me. Hussein knows when the shuhada, when the soldiers went, when they call Hussein, that is the last minute. That's why they call his uncle Hussein. Imam Hussein, he came very fast to Basin. Ah, oh, his body on the ground. 
He said he was dragging his feet on the ground. I'm so big. And my arm took him in back. Oh, imagine the heart of a thing at that moment. And this man wanted it. He did it and I'd be ready to mercy for the little king. Assalamu alaikum. السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا بغيت وبغي الليل ولا جعل الله آخر الأهد مني زيارات السلام Get ready, inshallah, for the Ramadan. Ya Hussein, oh. 